Happy Friday, everybody, and welcome to our podcast for this week. Yay. I am Deb from Madam Stitch, and I am joined by Biz from Busy Crochet. And we're the duo behind There's No Crying in Crochet, the podcast where we talk about all of the things that trouble you and true crime, and then some. So yeah. you always get an extra treat. So welcome to our podcast. Yes. Uh, while we're here, we'll do some business first. All right. Make sure you subscribe to both of our YouTube channels because I know Biz is very busy getting tutorials ready for YouTube. And I'm going to be doing some tutorials as well for an upcoming blanket crochet along. So we have lots of things going on besides mm -hmm. this broadcast, which means when you like and subscribe, you get all of the first notifications when that stuff arrives. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And if you happen to be watching us on Facebook, which I hope you are, give StreamYard permission to display your name mm -hmm. so we can see your name in the chat. And that way we are talking to a person, not a Facebook chat bot. So yeah. that would be awesome. Yeah. All right. That's well, the business thing. biz. Yes. What's up this week? Well, in Florida, we had a hurricane come through, but it was on the peninsula side. And I've had a lot of people reach out to me asking if we're all right. Yes, thank you so much for um, showing your concern. Appreciate it more than you know. Uh, but we are safely tucked on the left side of Florida in the panhandle, which we get a hurricane about every once once every 10 years or so. So we don't really get the brunt of it. Um, but be praying for those that are, have been in the path of this hurricane. Cause I know it, they talked about it possibly swooping around and coming back over the peninsula again. I don't know if it's doing that or not, but hopefully not. Well, I really hope not because uh, living as close to the East coast as we do, we get hurricanes that come up the East coast and just drag all of that moisture and horrible things up the coast, so I know exactly what that feels yes, like. So oysters. I'm glad you are safe. Yes, we are. Anything else going on besides just uh, surviving the weather? It's been a really chill week. I have been um, busy working on a new Christmas blanket design, which I'm super excited about, but it's a secret. So um, I'm not really showing much of it right now. Um, I think you guys are going to love it, though, because it's going to be a free pattern, and it's going to be with Nana's... Um, crafty home and so it'll be free forever and I'm, I'm just kind of excited about that and by the way I just saw it and it's awesome so you need to do it yeah yeah it'll be fun yeah and you Miss Debbie what have you been up to <laughs> well we finished off uh, we we're very homebody um, so generally if we have the choice to go out and stay in stay in is the winner almost every time every but time. this summer We've done random activities like go to concerts and do outdoor things. Mm -hmm. This past weekend, my husband and I drove it about an hour away to a little town called Jim Thorpe. Yeah. Now that, that um, name may sound familiar because Jim yes. Thorpe was a very famous Olympian. Um, and the town, I think he's from the town. So it's named really? after him. Really? That is so cool. Yeah. So it's in... Uh, the Lehigh River runs through this part of Pennsylvania, and Pennsylvania is absolutely gorgeous, y'all. It's got um, lush rolling hills. The Pocono Mountains are about a half an hour away. Um, and this sits right in the Lehigh River Gorge. So there's oh, lots neat. of tubing and rafting and stuff like that. We, we didn't do that. But we went up there for the weekend, got an Airbnb, and just hung out. Nice. Saw some of the historic stuff. We went hiking. Um, and it was just a really sweet, relaxing weekend. And now it's the fall, being today is September 1st, and we're off to the races. But yeah. that was just a really nice way to end the summer that vacation. Sounds wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really that sweet. Was really nice. So that really? is what was going on this week. Um, all right. Are we ready to get into today's episode? We are. Okay. Very ready. All right. 
today's episode, we are starting, we're so excited because um, the whole month of, of September, except for next week where we'll do um, an informational podcast, we are focusing on crochet fall fashion, um, in particular okay. accessories. So we're not really talking about that I know of unless we change our minds, sweaters and cardigans and all of that kind of stuff, wearables. We're talking mostly about accessories. And today oh is, oh wait, wait, I've got the wrong banner up. Uh, uh, it's okay. Uh, uh, where to go? Oh, wait, there it is. Look, <laughs> it moved. It is. <laughs> it's a miracle. <laughs> oh my God. Why Biz was looking so confused. Like, wow, <laughs> because we were, we did that one already. Traveling <laughs> back in time to do that episode again, because we know we have lots more to talk about. Just kidding. Absolutely. Um, but today we're going to be talking about um, neckwear accessories. And I am so excited because this is probably my favorite thing to design and make is everything neckwear. I just crank them out like there's no tomorrow. I'm, I'm blankets and then probably next would be neckwear for me as well. It's just, they're simple. They're easy. They're kind of, they're like the small project versus the big project. And I, I absolutely love how a simple scarf, so we're donning some of our own things, right? Yes. So yes. Um, this is just something simple that I crocheted up. I know Biz is wearing one of hers and behind me you can see mm -hmm. another one, um, the Anera Infinity Scarf. Um, I, I love to make them because I, um, they just dress up an outfit. Um, you could wear, be wearing a burlap sack, put on a beautiful scarf, and people go, you look great. <laughs> of course, I don't wear burlap sacks, and I'm sure you don't either, but you know what I'm talking They're about. They're a little itchy. I mean, have you ever run into actual burlap? Um, yeah, yeah, and so not itchy. cool. <laughs> I have a story about burlap, if you ever want to know it. Oh, my goodness. I made a mistake um, in washing it once. Oh, what happened? In a washer. And then drying it in a dryer. And it basically disintegrated and yeah. filled my entire dryer up with burlap particles. And it took me so long to clean that out. Oh no. It was unbelievable. And make and make everything stink. Because it's got that kind of tarry oh, smell yeah. to it. <sighs> yep. Holy cow. <laughs> it was such a mistake. I mean, it was a long, long time ago, but I've never done it again. Obviously. Was there a particular reason why you washed burlap? I mean, because well, it does stink. Yes. It, well, it was that. And I wanted to use it for a project, but I wanted to kind of get that smell out of it. And it was going in one of my kids' rooms because I wanted to use it. This is back when, um, oh, I can't remember what his name was, but he used to do um, cheap wallpaper using fabric and like starch and he would put it on the walls and here's i was gonna do that with the burlap big mistake it was just it was bad i don't recommend it no ever. um no it sounds um quite awful actually it was it was traumatic <laughs> thankfully you're past it now <laughs> way way past it way all right I'm going to get us back on track here. Yeah, I'm sorry. It was a, I totally no, no, no. You know what? That's perfectly fine. Um, all right. So we have several different types of neckwear that we're going to talk about today. Yes. We're going to do scarves, cowls. <laughs> uh, you've got your pocket shawl, pocket scarves. Mm -hmm. um, and a new trend that I'm seeing pop up, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But let's start with yes. scarves. Gosh. Okay. So I have to pick up my absolute favorite scarf. It's looking a little peaked these days, but this is my Heartland Granny Square scarf. Love I mean, it. it's just join as you go in autumn colors. I pull that baby out when it starts to get a little bit cooler and I wrap it around. It's long enough. I think this is about 80 inches long. So I love to make them long so that I can, double wrap them. So I'm going to take this off for a second. One of the things that I absolutely love about scarves is the different ways that you can style them. Mm 
Mm-hmm. So I'm not standing up, so you can't see them hung <laughs> along around me. No, I'm not standing up. But what I love to mm-hmm. fold them in half. Wait, here it is. Okay. Yep. And take this part, thread the other part through, mm-hmm. ooch it up a little bit, and then it stays wrapped and hangs mm-hmm. straight down. And you mm-hmm. can just pull that apart and show it mm-hmm. off and all that. I love doing that. Mm-hmm. You've got yours wrapped in a I always do way. mine. Yeah, I always do mine so that I can wrap it around twice and just kind of leave it hanging here. Mm-hmm. That way, if I'm warm, I can open it up. Or <laughs> if I'm, you know, freezing, I could just, it tucks nicely inside of a jacket that way. And I can, you know, fluff it up around my face if I need to. Um, this one is my Four Seasons um, scarf. I love scarves just because they are so nice to, like, if you're working on learning a new stitch pattern, scarves are like the way to go because yeah. you, can, you you work the pattern to death. So you know it by the time you're done, but then you've got something really useful and smart afterwards. And I use them as Christmas gifts every mm-hmm. year. I mean, my daughter mm-hmm. and daughter-in-law have a big selection of cowls and scarves. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love the fact that scarves are versatile. Um, I have one, I don't have it here, but I have one, I have a lot of fingering weight yarn in my stash. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I went through a phase of buying fingering weight yarn because I absolutely hate to work with it. Oh, do you really? Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. I would would get drawn in by (laughs) the Indy dyers who had these absolutely phenomenal colors. colors. And I go, I want that one and that one and that. And so I've got a whole basket full of one skein wonders, right? <laughs> so a couple years ago, I started um, just winding them up and mm-hmm. creating little summer scarves for them oh, um, out of them. And so I've got a couple of things in my shop that have, mm-hmm. um, that use fingering weight yarn. One hank, I okay. chose a stitch and I just keep going until I'm done. And it, it makes a nice little mm-hmm. summer edition scarf so i love using it for my stash we've got a couple of uh comments here just me linnea says uh fingering weight is my favorite i can't click on these oh hold on oh here we go Mm -hmm. uh fingering weight is your favorite fingering weight is actually one of my favorite ones to work with too when i'm doing shawls and things like that of course that's later in the month but um That's what I do with my fingering weights, just because um, for me to do a, oh, I take that back. There is one I make. It's not my own design, but it's called Portobello Road. And it is a sampler scarf that works up beautifully in uh, DK weight and fingering yarn. And it's just, it's one of my favorite scarves I make. Um, Connie also says, make a Doctor Who scarf. <laughs> That's the one that just goes until like. I know. Week. It's, I think <laughs> it's like 150 inches long. It's like, it's like insane, seven, right? Yeah, oh gosh. Yes. Now, I, I want to say, don't get me wrong. I think fingering weight is absolutely gorgeous because, mm-hmm. because they, it's just the weight is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. But I find it difficult to work with I think Mm -hmm. because I'm trying to use too small of a hook so the couple of scarves that I've made in fingering weight I I used a slightly larger hook Mm -hmm. and that seemed to work okay so I'm giving I'm giving it a chance yeah (laughs) I'm gonna work with it yeah but um but my I'm a DK worsted weight girl yeah that's pretty much where I live Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Oh, you know, I just, I like scarves because they make me feel like I have less of a second chin. <laughs> I can kind of hide behind it. <laughs> Let me pick this one up. So one of the things that I was going to talk, this might be too long to do this, but I was going to talk about um, how you can convert <gasps> a regular scarf into an infinity scarf. So basically, I can't look at myself and do this. So basically... <laughs> You just keep wrapping it around. This is uh-huh. going to be very oh, tall. A long one. Holy very... Cow. <laughs> I think it's, I think it might be 80 inches, um, but you can just kind of work those. Oh, nice. In. I like that. Yes. And then it 
because I'm losing my, my own hearing as well. Um, then you can just tuck it in and it looks like um, a regular cowl or an infinity scarf. Oh, I like it. I like yeah. the way that, it, so a little bit longer one than mine, because mm -hmm. mine is just pretty much traditional length. Yeah. Well, let me see if I can kind of, nope, I can't. I can tell right now I'm going to choke myself. <laughs> no, this is great for when you've got that coat buttoned all the way up. Mm -hmm. We, we yep. have very weird patterns here in the Lehigh Valley in that um, we sit between the Pocono Mountains and the Appalachian Trail mm -hmm. and the ocean. And just, it's just kind of a wedge. Yeah. And depending upon how the, the weather patterns are going, we could get three feet of snow. Oh, or fun. like last winter, it's 50 all winter. So you just, and then the wind could blow, you know, below zero, or it can be, let's wear our shorts outside in December. Mm -hmm. So you just never know. Um, but I love to do that when I've got my coat all buttoned up to the very top and it just kind of envelops yes. everything. Yes. And that's what I love. It's just like, you just kind of sink down into it. It's just, <laughs> it's so that's, it's that's, just so good. that's very attractive biz. Um, all right. <laughs> we do have a couple more comments too. Oh, thank I wish you. I could click on them. Oh, <clears throat> thanks. I, I, like I said, that's one of my all time favorite scarves. It's made out of Lion Brand Heartland, which is just a gorgeous, saturated, really satiny worsted weight. Love it, it works up beautifully, um, and the colors are just insanely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. So, one of my favorites. Um, oh, here's back to fingering weight. I know I'm. I think I'm being a little um, scattered today, but it hurts my hand to use tiny hooks. See, I think that's the problem I've been encountering is that um, I always assume I have to use a really little hook with fingering weight and you really mm -hmm. don't. You can go all the way up to an E or an F, I think. Mm -hmm. I use F. Right? I literally, oh, okay. I, I can't say that I never go smaller than an F. I will once in a while use like a, a D or, yeah, about a D, but, or a C, but I primarily... <laughs> use an F when I use uh, fingering weight, just because I know it's a little bit more loose and drapey, mm -hmm. but I also am not, you know, causing hand cramps and just like what we've been saying. Yeah. 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 I remember my grandmother making doilies. Oh my goodness. I mean, those are with steel hooks. How is, anyway, I digress. I have um, made one doily, one doily and I gave it away as a, as a wedding present. And I hope that those people treasure it because it's the only one I've ever made. <laughs> And it's the last one you're going to the last one. <laughs> All right. I think um, we could do um, infinity scarf. Now, I don't have a heading for that, but that comes right mm -hmm. out of scarf. Mm -hmm. um, talking, let's talk lengths of scarves. Yeah. Um, we've mentioned this a little bit. Um, the Doctor Who scarf is, you know, you could stand on one end of the property and, and hold one end and stand on the other end of the property and still not have the ends. Just about, um, it's know. just insane. But when I'm making a scarf, particularly for winter, I will do something around 72 inches long. I will go up to 80 if I want to get extra generous, but I also keep the width at about eight to nine inches. So it doesn't get too bulky. Yeah. Um, same. Yeah. So an infinity scarf is really just a regular scarf with yeah. the ends sewn together so that now it, it becomes a really big cowl so that you can uh -huh. put it on. Of course, I don't have one here. Oh, wait, I do. <laughs> All right. This is um, my <clears throat> Scarlet Snowberry um, yeah, you just re-released that one, didn't you? I did. My Scarlet Snowberry. Oh, that's so pretty. And it's about 60 inches long yeah. before you um, sew the ends together. Mm -hmm. But it makes the absolute perfect length now to just do one loop. And this yarn is just to die for. This is, um, it is so pretty. Sardar's Jewel Spun. Mm -hmm. Oh, fun. Um, and I, it's so soft, so soft. And of course the colors are gorgeous, but an infinity scarf, I usually make it about 
60 to 64 inches long and then sew the ends together or I would do it in the round mm -hmm. with that width and then that way you can double wrap it or you can let it hang long and it's mm -hmm. not down to your knees yeah I only have one infinite true infinity scarf um it's called shoots and ladders it's a very very beginner friendly one because it just has some single crochet sections and some double crochet chain one sections it's just very good for learning but it it makes a nice it was one of my first patterns so caught me with some break here there's not a lot to it <laughs> Oh, uh, we have, I have to share this one. Um, oh gosh. I, I'm not sure how you, how you uh, do that. I'm a self-confessed yarn snob. I don't buy big box chain store yarn for 15 and a half years now, rare occasions only, mostly baby blankets. Yeah. Um, a lot of the reason, I mean, we can get into this on another occasion, but a lot of the reason why I do use more of the more commonly available yarns is just because I want people to be able to replicate my design. So uh -huh. yeah. um, it's harder from when a designer you standpoint, things. yeah. Yeah, from a designer standpoint, sticking with those more common yarns mm -hmm. is really about the only way we can go because once you get into um, independently produced, then it gets almost impossible to replicate the sample and it gets expensive too. Yeah. And not to say that we don't ever use, because I do, you, I can see that you like the jewel sponge. So you're familiar with Sirdar mm -hmm. and, and stuff. Um, so I use those yarns as well and I will use them for designing usually, but I'm along with Debbie. I tend to stick with like major brands that most mm -hmm. people are buying right now. Um, although I personally, for my own self, like this, this is, um, what it, this is called eco fusion and it is a yarn from South Africa. So mm -hmm. it, you know, for my own personal use, I have a tendency to buy the more special yarns. Yeah. And this one that I was wearing, oh, look at the coloring in this thing. Isn't that um, pretty? I love that. Yeah. I can't remember the exact, um, it might be either Madeline Tosh or one of my favorite mm. indie dyers. But I just love the way the colors play mm -hmm. through the stitches. Oh, yeah, gorgeous. That but this is, is just wonderful. one hank. And that's that's probably an investment of $30 for the hank. I mean, it's not cheap, right? No. Um, not, and that's why we can't live there. <laughs> <laughs> um, Connie asks, how wide do y'all do your infinity scarf? Um for me, I generally stick with that. Um, it can be anywhere from six to nine inches, but I think my Snowberry, I think this is 12 or 14. I mean, it's it's pretty substantial because yeah. those are big granny squares. And then I added a fairly substantial um, border on both ends. So it's pretty thick. I typically, if I'm going to make an infinity scarf, I will usually make it anywhere from 12 to 18 inches wide, just because I like to have the fold over ability of it mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, I do have, I told you, I had my infinity scarf, not my infinity, but my cowl out somewhere. Um, Cause I do the same thing with my cowls. I try to make them thicker so that they, you know, just sit really nicely there, but I misplaced it. So I can't even show it to you. Like what the heck? <laughs> oh, now I I do. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> behind me mm -hmm. is one I designed this summer called the Anera Infinity Scarf, and it's basically the same length as mm -hmm. the Snowberry. It's a little bit um, narrower, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I did it in a summer DK weight yarn. Mm -hmm. So there's an example of something that, you know, you, if you happen to be um, out and about and it's a cool evening, that would be a great addition mm -hmm. to any outfit. And that one's super pretty too. Uh, I, uh, I can't, uh, you've got me wanting to get out my fingering weight yarns. In fact, I think I'll do that after this broadcast. Anyway, <clears throat> let's go back. All right. We've done scars. Hold on a second. 
Okay. We've done scars. The next category, I this this has to be my favorite. I've got so many cows in my um, in my wardrobe. To me, making cows is a lot like making washcloths. Um, okay, they're small. Mm -hmm. You can try a new stitch, like you said. Mm -hmm. um, they you can make a cow out of one hank, and then you know you won't break the bank when you buy that expensive yarn. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it's they're great accessories for when you just want to throw something extra on like I'm wearing black any extra cowl just yes. adds that pop of color yes and the thing I love about cowls too is they're typically not as roomy as an infinity scarf they're just right here they're just super snug and they're another one where it's like you know you know bury your face <laughs> in it because I don't know what it is about I don't wear things around my neck very often because I'm very, very warm all of the time. But in, I'm, and they say that we're supposed to have a cold winter in Pensacola this year. So, you know, pray with me. that Bring it, bring it. Because I want to be able to wear my scarves. And I just, when I get, it's like, I just want to do this, you know, because <laughs> it's so snuggly. I don't get to do it they very are. often. They are. Um, I have a couple here. This one is actually called a touch of fall. Um, and I, I've done it in a couple of oh, color so combinations. Um, this one, I actually did splurge on, um, some expensive yarn, but it's two hanks. So you just buy one of each color mm -hmm. and it's good to go, but it, it's a little bit wider. So you're right. You could put this guy on. I don't usually put it up over my face and my mm -hmm. cows are a little bit longer, <laughs> but, but you definitely I could if you wanted to. I could if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as far as length is concerned, or cows are usually done in the round, yeah. um, I usually try to keep them at 30, somewhere in the early 30 inch range. Mm -hmm. However, if you want something that will do what you want, this, it needs mm -hmm. to be in the upper 20s, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a little bit closer. Yeah. My Typical cowl um, sits about 35 to 36 inches if you want space around your neck. If you want, like you said, closer, I bring it into probably the 27, 28 area as far as um, like length. Yeah. Um, yeah, I prefer, I, I love them both, but to make them, I love making cowls. They're just so satisfying. They whip up in no time and you can, there are so many possibilities. Mm -hmm. So many possibilities. For sure. For sure. Um, let's see. Um, I think we, oh, <laughs> I wasn't able to grab this one out, but I have a fun cowl. I don't even know where this idea came from i'm not really sure where half the ideas came from that i put into practice but i did a cowl mm -hmm. a couple of years ago <clears throat> because i had i had gotten i think it might have been oh neighborhood fiber company they do specialty yarns every now and right. then and it was this absolutely gorgeous green color mm -hmm. um and i did hexagons and i uh, of course, that doesn't make an even edge around the top, right? right? right. So what I did was I put a straight border. I, I made it straight across the top and I made it jagged across the bottom and then put oh, the fringe fun. only in the front. Oh, um, fun. And it, it's just a really fun one. I wasn't able to get it out of storage for this broadcast, but it's a lot of fun. I mean, there's so many things you can do with cows. We have a question um, from Carolina. Yes. Carolina. Yes. Carolina. <laughs> um, what kind of yarn should I use for scarf? Honestly, if you're going to wear them, I would say whatever feels really good against your skin. Um, Biz, you were talking about using fingering weight, but when you're doing, let's say, a winter scarf or a fall mm -hmm. scarf, what do you normally gravitate toward? Um, typically, I, okay, and this is just my personal preference. I typically gravitate towards DK weight yarns, especially when I'm making accessories. They feel like the worsted weights have a tendency, unless, let me let me put a caveat on that. Uh, worsted weights like um, wool ease 
or something like that that's actually a thinner worsted mm. can also work because it's not as bulky but something like a um i love this yarn or um a red heart super saver for me especially if you're going to put any kind of texture into it it's mm -hmm. bulky they get a little bit stiff um i don't like all of all that up in my face this is a a, a dk weight yarn i like it because it's very it makes it very fluid it's still very soft it's the still, drape is great yes the drape and it's all about mm -hmm. how you wear your items so it's personal preference really um and like you and said what the use is what yeah, you're going to use it for mm -hmm. yeah but if you don't like dk weight yarns then i would try to lean more towards the thinner worsted weights yeah for scarves i generally tend to gravitate toward worsted because they give a little more heft mm -hmm. to the scarf for mm -hmm. cowls pretty much always dk weight mm -hmm. um and i i can't wear wool i can wear merino wool mm -hmm. uh, super wash merino wool because it's soft um and it doesn't scratch but Mm -hmm. um, I generally try to keep to fibers that don't scratch. I do love alpaca, mm -hmm. um, but that's, that can be pretty heavy and it's mm -hmm. really warm. Yeah. Really warm. Oh yeah, for sure. We do have a couple mm -hmm. of comments. Um, Linnea says that the wool ease is more of a true worsted. And I love this yarn is actually more of an air and weight yarn. That's good mm -hmm. information to know. And yeah. I don't necessarily do so well with knowing what all of the names of everything are, because I know that there's a difference between European and American. So um, I know that worsted weight is more of like a size 10 in like UK weight yarn. I don't know, maybe. Um, and then there's air and weight, which is like just, you know, chunkier and bulkier. Right. Yeah. Um, and Connie says she loves cotton on her skin. I agree. Um, I don't usually use cotton in the winter time, but um, for fall it would be great because it's yeah. nice and it's it can be warm. It's breathable. It's mm -hmm. has all of those qualities we want for to sure. Fall accessory. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, what is the uh, newest thing that you see coming down the pike in fall fashion trends this year? Well, I have to preface this by saying that there was a, an industry report on fashion trends for the fall. Okay. Um, and it, it, it encompassed a lot of different trends. Mm -hmm. um, but one of them was granny squares. Oh, fun. Oh, my goodness. And Yay. I, you know, I, so I'm, I'm breaking out my fingering weight yarn and I'm going to make granny squares. That's, <laughs> that's how that goes. That's that is one. Um, I mean, granny squares, as in my opinion, in my humble opinion, can do just about anything you want them mm -hmm. to. And we spent a whole month celebrating them. So we yes. all know that. They are the bomb.com. <laughs> I'm going to have to trademark that. That's good. Um, <laughs> but one of the things that I'm seeing, I actually saw a season or two ago, and it's becoming more common, is adding a hood to a scarf or a cowl. Mm -hmm. Have you seen this? Yes, I have. Definitely. Mm. And um, I've not done it, but it does not look like it's very hard. Have you done it? No, but it's on my list, uh, my to-do list for the fall and winter. It really looks um, like it's just two straight pieces that you just... Right. So I think what you can do, I haven't tried it, so don't quote me on any of this, people. Mm -hmm. um, I think what you do is you make a regular cowl or you make a regular scarf. Uh -huh. And then in the center of it, or where it would be around the back and to the front, mm -hmm. you can just start crocheting along the top, mm -hmm. back and forth in rows. When it gets long enough, you sew that seam at the top, and you've got a hood that, okay. that can become part of the scarf um, and the cowl. We have an Australian joining us. Ah, uh, I have to, I have a few and I mostly use fingering weight. Yes. Okay. So that's, I mean, that's a perfect example of the weight of yarn really depends upon where you live. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. 
she uses fingering weight yarn because, um, and it is, it's sometimes harder to get patterns because, yeah. um, again, as designers, we try to stick with more mainstream yarns so that it's accessible to the general public. Yeah. Um, and fingering weight yarns just aren't there yet. They, no. they just aren't part of well, the Well, maybe mainstream. we should make a mission. We should make it our mission. We've got a bunch of missions, um, and I oh, like it. Do. They're starting <laughs> to stack up. I know. My to-do list is just <laughs> ridiculous right now. <laughs> but I love it. I mean, you know, I'm like a kid in a candy shop. Uh -huh. Tell me you want a certain design or you want to try a certain stitch or you uh -huh. want. I, I go, okay, give me a moment. Let mm -hmm. me go write that down. I got gotcha. you. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I've got too many of those. I've got just mm -hmm. on yeah, my because lips. then I become myopically fo focused on, okay, oh, I got to go do this. I got to go do that. You know, and I get so distracted so easily as it is. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> oh, one oh, more. Is. Yes. No, yep. Those are good sources. Ravelry and Lovecrafts. Yes, they do have plenty of uh, pattern options. But I do think... Um, Again, it's talking from a designer's perspective. We we try to honor our personal yeah. style. Yeah, for right? sure. So my style is different from Biz's and Biz's mm -hmm. is different from mine. Um, but we also try to fill voids when we see them. And it's yeah. beautiful to talk about these things with other people because we don't know necessarily what's missing and we can help fill yeah. those gaps. Yeah, absolutely. So um, one of the other things that has become really, really popular because mostly of the Wednesday TV show or not TV show, but Netflix series is the snood. The snood is making yes. a comeback. What is that? So it's just a tube, basically. It's it's oh. literally just a really freaking long cowl. Excuse my language. But it just, because then you just put it up over your head. It's like a hood with a cowl on the bottom of it. So, I mean, it's cute. I, so why I am I not making it? Anywhere, but the young ones like it. Yeah, well, basically. There's another to, there's another to, there's another to do. <laughs> and, they, and a lot of people, because they are pulling it from the Wednesday show, a lot of them are doing that black and white on one side, rainbow on the other, mm. or you know, all black and white because uh, Wednesday's all into, and especially with the hol Halloween season coming up, you know, the, the creepy. Oh man, that would be awesome, right? Very, very popular right now. Uh, oh um, my gosh, you had. I hope I'm not saying your name wrong, but Jai or G, I apologize if I say that incorrectly. You're a yarn snob too, and that's okay. It is good to you know be what? a yarn snob sometimes. Yep. Some, we, we all have our we all have our hangups and we all have our things that we love and don't love and you know what if you like pretty yarn do it you know if i'm gonna take that much time to make something for myself absolutely. it needs to be something i absolutely adore so mm -hmm. you go yep for absolutely. sure <laughs> and connie uh, connie my my dear friend connie she said a snood <laughs> sounds like a stuck up cowl <laughs> you well <laughs> we love you <laughs> we do we do and it, it kind of is i guess or is it a a hippie cowl i kind of look at it as more of a relaxed cowl because it's got the hood on it and stuff like that and it's i feel like it's not it's more fringe wear it's more like college kids wearing it you know that right. Kind of and you know what? I absolutely see it on the runway. Can't you just imagine yes. a model wearing it on? It seems like it would be that kind of. Um, Definitely. That kind well, of accessory. Lisa, she doesn't see Con Connie's comments. It's because Connie's on Facebook right now. So we can see her because we're streaming there. So I apologize. Unfortunately, if you're not on YouTube, I, I didn't realize that you couldn't see Facebook comments. But yeah. Um, so we'll try to include Connie's comments on screen <laughs> when they need to be here. I tell you what, we'll let you see this one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 
I digress. That to me seems to be the the big trends. I mean, I had to get a plug in there for my granny scrubs, right? But Absolutely. I think the yeah. hoods being added to mm -hmm. scarves, uh, pocket, pocket scarves and pocket shawls have been mm -hmm. a huge deal now for two or three years. And I don't see those now, yeah. going away anytime soon. And we're going to no. talk about shawls and wraps in a couple yes. of weeks, but so we don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but, yes. um, I, I have been just and it's another thing on my, on my let's try it list. Yeah. White figured out how to make it work yet. So it's not happening. But when that <laughs> light bulb finally goes off, yeah. there will be a pocket shawl in my, in my shop. In so, your collection. That's right. There you go. That's right. You have a, you have a list. We all have a list. <laughs> it's really long. And this afternoon I have to start something else. <laughs> oh my gosh, me too. Yep. But me it's too. so much fun. It's so much fun to start new things. Uh, well, unless our commenters have something else they want us to talk about, I think we've we've exhausted um all we've of the things. We had a good conversation about neckwear today. Oh, Connie says it's easy. Well, okay. So yes, it's easy. A pocket shawl is easy. Yes, but I don't know. I, I get if it's a design element I haven't tried yet, it takes me forever to figure out what what's going to be the perfect one for me. Mm -hmm. And once I get it figured out, then I can crank them out left and mm -hmm. right. But that's one of those I haven't figured out the exact thing I want. So Yeah, it has to speak to you. Yeah. Because you're going to be making it more than once. All right. Um, but we're not quite done. Oh, we're not? We do have, no, because what are we doing on Instagram this month? Oh, I don't have a banner. So let me get a banner up while you start to explain. Okay, so we're going to have some fun on Instagram this month. It's kind of in conjunction with our podcast on YouTube. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you're on Instagram, we are going to be running a um, challenge for the month of September where we are going to be having you share uh, your fall fashion favorites. And every day of the week, we are going to be giving you a prompt so that you can take a picture of or share a picture that you've already taken of, some, of the prompt that is that day. And so at the end of the week, we also have a hashtag that you are going to need to use, which is going to be crochet fall fashion challenge 23. And she'll have that Wait. up there. <laughs> yep. No problem. Crochet we'll for just a second. <laughs> but you need to use the hashtag and follow the prompts. We're going to be watching it. And each week we are going to be, oh, you forgot the word challenge. Um, All right. Hold on. <laughs> okay. edit it. Okay, back up, rewind. I'm going to go back to, we have a hashtag that you're going to need to use <laughs> on Instagram so that um, we can keep track of everybody that's participating. And <laughs> at the end of each week, we are going to give away a free pattern from either Debbie or my Ravelry account. And um, to whomever is in there, you're all going to go in the pot and we're going to pull a name out. And um, so yes. we hope that you participate because we want to see everything that you're doing. And then each week on Friday, because we're here every Friday at 1 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Eastern, uh, we are going to announce the winners. You don't have to be from the United States. You can be from anywhere. So mm -hmm. as long as you participate on Instagram, because it's part Instagram, part YouTube. And then we want that to was perfect. So you can be a part of the drawing. Yay. All right. So that means we have to get our act together and do the drawings before our podcast. What? <laughs> we can do it. We know how. All right. I'm going to add this last one so that you know. The Instagram site. It's Instagram.com. It's yes. available as an app. It's easier. I want to say it's easier to use it as an app. However, it is available on a PC and I just did a big a big um, download today on my computer instead of my app. So it works just as well in both places. 
Yeah, it used to be just the app because they wanted you to spend all your time in the app. But <laughs> they realized that for those of us who are loading large things in there, that it just gets to be tedious doing it yep. on our little phone. So you can go to Instagram.com and sign into your account, mm -hmm. which usually is for me, it's Instagram.com backward slash Madam Stitch. And I'm uh -huh. sure it's busy crochet for you, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so whatever your Instagram handle is becomes that backward slash mm -hmm. tack that on to Instagram.com. Can, can you put our Instagram handles as a, as a banner? real quick. I will. Let do me yours first. And then, mine has no, a, I'm, I'm going to do yours first. Underscore between my words. Yes. You got me confused. Oh, I'm it's going to be a period there. All right. Um, and a Madam Stitch with an E. All right. So let's show this one. All right. Here we go. Yep. There okay. we are. Those are our Instagram handles. We would love it if you'd follow us just so that, you know, you can kind of keep up with what we're doing there as well. We do reels. We let you know notifications when we have new patterns. Anytime we're involved in any kind of a collaboration with another group of designers, we put kind of everything on there. Yep. We do a lot of stuff on Facebook as well, but Instagram is kind of the place we start. So that's where it's going to be. Yeah. And I know Biz has already beat me to the punch, but she's already posted the carousel that explains everything that's going on. Yeah. Tomorrow, mm -hmm. we will um, post the week of daily prompts. Thank you, Lene. And, and oh, the sorry. first, and the day one prompt. So, yes. yeah, so you will, every day, we'll make sure that we post the daily prompt with the hashtag you're supposed to use. Yes. Um, we still have some stuff we need to finish up for it, but I think it's going to be a ton of fun. We are going to have fun. Yes. Yes, we are. It's going to be a good time. Speaking of good times, <laughs> what have you been watching this week? So we always have to just we got to finish up our true. Yep. Mm -hmm. So what have you been able to watch this week? So I have been on BritBox this week um, because, just because, and um, I, okay, so I finished up, last week I was watching The Terminalist. I finished The Terminalist, and that was good. I wonder if they're going to do a second one, could do a second one possibly, um, but with the, the strike, who knows. But I also on BritBox today or in the last couple of days, I'm going to finish that last episode today. It's called Karen Peary, P-I-R-I-E. And it is about a young Scottish. It's a Scottish um, show with, um, I love the accents, but they're not so broke that you can't understand them. <laughs> but um, <laughs> they, it's a young DC, D, DS, DCI. Uh, anyway, she's the boss. And so she's young and she ends up with a young guy who is um, her assistant and she gets this 25 year old murder that she has to solve. And she is on the cusp. I'm on the cusp of finding out who the bad guy is. So I don't no. know who it is, but it's really good. It's a, it's a cute little show. All right. Tell me the name again. Karen Peary, P-I-R-I-E. All right, that's going on my watch list. That sounds really good. That's also getting really long. <laughs> yeah, but but um, I think we've discovered that, at least in my case, it it's either something I can watch by myself or it has to be husband friendly. So. Yeah, and it's only had three episodes, so it's not a forever thing. <laughs> that's good. Mm. Um, are they long episodes? Because BritBox tends yeah. to be. Um, yeah. All it's, right. It's well, produced, so yeah. it's, it's a commitment. Yes, it's a commitment. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I just can't make commitments right now. I'm sorry. Um, but anyway, um, I actually this week found a show that my husband really likes. And you're going to have to, you're going to laugh. 
Um, a long time ago when it first came out, I watched mm -hmm. White Collar religiously on network TV. Okay. Do you not know this show? White Collar, yeah. Yeah. And so I loved it because I loved the characters. I loved mm -hmm. the, the stuff that they did and the way they interacted with each other. Um, That's the one with Matt Bomer, and, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, it's it's very easy on the eyes. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway... <laughs> Um, I, I thought it's, I guess it's now all the seasons are on Hulu. So I thought, yeah, okay. I'm just going to give that a try the other night. The Phillies weren't playing. So I tried it and he really liked it. God. And so we watched this, a second episode last night. It was really kind of fun for me to go back to the very beginning uh -huh. and see how the relationship started because I only remember later in the seasons when I was mm -hmm. watching it most recently. Yeah. Um, so I'm watching it again. He's watching it for the first time. Now we won't be able to watch it tonight because I'm um, the Phillies are really hot right now. I mean, I just really hot tonight. right now. They right. So baseball's on TV tonight. Okay, he's just starting to get itchy. <laughs> Notice, <laughs> mine's <Yeah>. gone. <laughs> I mean, it's summer, y'all. Oh my gosh. Um. All right. I think... Yes, so the Phillies are playing and they're really, really hot right now, so you can't watch it? Uh, well, I could. I mean, he'll let me watch up to a certain hour in the evening, and then I switch it over to the game. But um, they, the stadium is selling out every time they play at home. Wow. At all summer long, it's been that way. That's um, awesome. They, they are just, and they're really hot right now, so that's fun. Anyway, um, I think that's it, Biz. I know. For another week. We've come for to another the week. End. But I really appreciate it. I have to thank everybody for, for yes. coming. It's so much fun it to is. see what you guys have to think. Um, we live in our own little bubbles in you know Pennsylvania and Florida. And so it's so fun to see what you have to think about crochet. And, yes, and have a, a discussion about it. I just we love, love the so, feedback. Absolutely love yeah. the feedback. Absolutely it keeps us sharp. It um, helps us expand on our topic, and mm -hmm. I think it's just a great thing. So, thank mm -hmm. you for everybody who showed up. Thank you for everyone who's watched the replay all the way through because we really appreciate you being here. We love and it. join us next week for the next episode of There's No Crying in Crochet. Yay. Like I said, next week is an informational. So we're going to talk yes. all things crochet skills. And if mm -hmm. all goes well, we're going to be talking about gauge and finished measurements. <gasps> I know the dreaded gauge swatch. We're going to tackle it. Oh. Lene's in Western Washington state near the Canadian border. Uh, oh, is, it, is it a little chilly there yet? Lene? I bet they've had a heat wave on and off. Because I've noticed um, hot weather that far north. Mm -hmm. I think everybody's been getting <sighs> stocked. Thank you, uh, Carolina. Thank you. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and sign off. Um, mm -hmm. And we hope to see you all back here yes. next week at 2 Eastern. Yes. And come and discuss. Um, I'm sorry, 1 p.m. Central. And come and yes. discuss uh, patterns with us. Because we need you here next week, too. Yeah. Bring all of your, your issues with gauge and finished measurements and all of that mm -hmm. kind of stuff because we are going to tackle it. All right. We got to run. Yeah, we do. But we will see you again next time. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.